Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Finally got home from Vegas. Long, long travel day. Plane didn't take off for about an hour and a half after it should have. Sat on the plane on the tarmac waiting for uh, maintenance. But thankfully, made it home. Glad to be here. So, today's talk is going to be about how to change the brain's perception of danger. All right, so just slow down for a minute or two, relax. Settle yourself. All right. So, um, I've put forth that the brain's perception of danger is what causes symptoms. That's very much in line with Dr. Sarno's theory. In his world, he was very focused on repressed emotions as being the cause. But um, what I've kind of figured out is there's all sorts of perceived dangers that can cause the brain to turn on symptoms. Some are real, some are falsely perceived. So, as you know, I've got the fundamentals. What causes symptoms? Does this apply to me? So do those assessments. If you haven't or if you're unsure, do them again. Is this pdp.com? There are two assessments, not just the pain test. There's also an FIT test. The FIT is 19 questions on the page. It's not a quiz. It's not automated. You read the questions and write down how many true answers. The pain test is more of a, a quiz that is given a score. Do them both. Get a consensus. So, once you know that it is perceived danger creating your symptoms or pain, then the real question is, well, how do I change the brain's perception of danger? Right? The brain's perceiving danger. Some of it's subconscious. I don't even have conscious control of it. I'm telling myself I'm safe and the brain's not listening. Got it. So it's not a light switch. It's not something you can just say, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe, a thousand times a day and the brain goes, oh, good. More likely if you're doing that obsessively, the brain's going to say, what the heck is going on? Why, are you, why is this person doing all this stuff? That doesn't seem right. So, how do we change the perception of danger in the brain? Safety. Simple answer. Simple solution. Really tough to do. Doesn't mean it's impossible, because it's working all the time. All around the globe, I get messages from people all the time saying that this stuff works better for them than anything else they've tried in the mind-body space. Because I think it just boils it down to the core premise. The brain's perceiving danger. And in the case of chronic symptoms, it's most likely, most, most, most likely, a false perception of danger. The brain is operating on misinformation and fear. Some of that misinformation came from Dr. Google, WebMD, a lot of self-diagnoses, right? Who, who here has done that? Comment below if you do. Um, a lot of the misinformation comes from medical doctors because they will look at your body under a microscope, under a scanner, an MRI, an x-ray, ultrasound, whatever it may be. And they'll say, look right here. You're busted. You're broken. There's something wrong with you. And in some cases, those doctors, not knowing the cure or the solution, will say, get used to it. It's going to stick around. Misinformation. Misinformation, misinformation. The perception of danger creating symptoms is not taught in medical school. It's because they can only focus on things that can be treated with drugs or surgery or manipulation or physical body treatments. That's how medical school teaches medical students. This is a ground roots or grassroots effort to spread the word that we're not as broken as we think we are. As a matter of fact, in the case of perceived danger pain, I believe the perception is false. We're not really broken. The brain just thinks we are. 
and the brain is scared. So how do we change that false perception of danger? First of all, facts. How does this system work? Second of all, assessment. Does this apply to me? And symptoms that are coming from a brain perceiving danger behave much differently. If you're not sure what I mean by that, go to isthispdp.com and read the 19 or so questions in the FIT assessment. That will give you a really good idea how brain-created symptoms behave. Now, you don't have to have all of them. And if you don't have one, it doesn't mean it doesn't apply. It just means that there's different characteristics that we can use to determine your brain's creating the symptom, not your body. So number, way to, number one way to change your brain's perception of danger is facts. Do the upfront work. Learn about this system called the human body, brain, nervous system, the pain system, symptoms, and then do the assessments. Now, that's not going to automatically turn down your fear and the perception, but it's a starting point. Because without that foundation, how easy is it going to be to convince your brain to turn off the symptoms if you still think your body's a problem? It just doesn't work. So you got to get the foundation right. So, how else? Safety. Messages of safety. Consistent messages of safety. Now, if you search YouTube for pain-free you, 24 examples, you'll find my consistent messages of safety video where I give 24 different examples of ways to show and tell your brain, hey, I'm okay. All right? I'm not going to list them here. Go look for it. Search pain-free you, 24 examples on YouTube, and I can assure you, you'll, you'll find it. Um, but there are so many different ways of conveying safety to the brain. The core ones that I teach are emotionally, physically, mentally. How do we treat ourselves? How do we respond to symptoms? And where's our attention focused? Is it focused on the symptoms and fixing? Or is it focused on living? So, I believe sincerely we experience the world mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually too. And whether you're a, a spiritual person or not, the way we treat ourselves has a spiritual component to it. If you're beating yourself up all the time, it's not a spiritual approach. If you're kind and gentle and loving to yourself, yeah, that's kind of spiritual, right? You feel better. So, not a religious discussion whatsoever. My point is, if you can feel safer, not completely safe universally in every aspect of the world and globe and universe, but if you can feel safer mentally, emotionally, physically, the way you treat yourself and the way you respond to your symptoms and where you place your attention, it stands to reason. And it's proven that the brain will recognize the safety and change its perception from danger to, hey, maybe we're really okay. And once the brain changes that perception to, holy cow, I'm really okay, I'm not broken, symptoms will settle down, turn off. And it happens predictably, reliably, consistently when you make safety and teaching the brain that you're actually okay the dominant thought the core message is i'm okay now it's tough to do people say but but the symptoms are so crazy yeah i know but what's causing them the brain perceiving danger falsely does that make sense because if the brain's operating on bad data and you can fix the data let's do it right that's what i do here every day for you with you. It's up to you to make the decision to understand how the system works, do the assessments, and if it says it's TMS or perceived danger pain, that's what it is. Make the commitment to then teach your brain those facts. That's how we change the perception of danger. But we got to do it consistently because here's the key. If for a couple of days you're doing pretty good, you got the right mindset, yeah, I know I'm pretty good, 
but all of a sudden you have symptoms go up a little bit because the brain perceives a little bit more danger and you completely lose it and freak out. Consistency's not there. The brain's going to go, what was that about, Dan? Right? And so even though the next day you might jump right back on the right mindset and be like, nah, I'm really good, your brain's going to go, but yesterday you were in a complete panic. What is it? Are you in danger or are you okay? So consistency matters more than uh, anything else. Right? Do your best to freak out less. It's hard to go from freaking out all the time to not freaking out at all. So work on it gradually. Freak out less. Kind of wean yourself off of the freak out process. Because I can assure you, nobody ever got better by freaking out. I've never seen it. And you can pretty much know from your own experience, the more you freak out, the more you're struggling. The more you freak out, the more intense your symptoms are. And that makes you freak out even more, and then it snowballs upwards. Definitely not a productive strategy. So as much as you can, freak out less, panic less, fear less. And that can stand on the weight and shoulders and the foundation of the accurate knowledge of what creates symptoms, perceived danger, what turns them off, safety. This is how this stuff works, folks. And I'm seeing it working all the time. So many great comments. It sounds simple, and it is simple. Implementation is more challenging. But what I really want you to do is take this mindset. Yes, it's challenging, but I can do it. Be inspired to do this work because it will give you results when you commit to it and practice it. It takes practice. Nothing's overnight. So... It's been a long day, long day of travel from Vegas back home, and uh, I'm going to wrap this one up here, but that's how we change the perception of danger in the brain, so that the brain can turn off these symptoms. So, as always, love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.